Hey guys, it's Brent with Lycans Motorsports. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. Um, we're going to be looking at some more pistons today. These are Mali pistons uh, from Mr. Ron's uh, 363 small block 4 build. And uh, these just showed up. And we're slowly chipping away at his build as well. I am uh, still moving kind of slow and uh, trying to be careful in what I'm picking up and pushing and pulling and tugging on so my physical therapist told me to chill it out for a little bit so i would appreciate the grace and mercy of my customers um if things extend just a little bit longer on on build time but uh the block is completely machined um it's ready to go the crank and the rods are here the pistons just showed up yesterday and these are uh, off-the-shelf Miley pistons, but were ordered with a custom dish. So it was a custom uh, one-change deal to to a stock piston. Um, I like the the Miley stuff. They're they're very light, and um, they have the the graphite coating on the crowns and the skirts. And they usually include a pretty small modern ring pack, guys. If you're using um, a 5 64ths or, or even a, a 1 16th ring package in today's age um, you're severely behind the time on on current technology um, the uh, the modern metric ring packs and the 043 043 stuff um, is is basically where it's at and uh, a common misconception is a smaller ring um, allows for more blow by or less oil control and that's um that's not true at all um if you look at the cross-sectional area of, of a ring um a stress or force calculation based on stress and and pressure um will tell you that the same amount of combustion pressure over a smaller cross-sectional area will yield more force against the cylinder wall. So you actually have more sealing uh, forces against the cylinder wall with a, a thinner and smaller ring. So, and you also get less friction, so it's a win-win. Um, so stepping off the soapbox, um, my lead piston, so it's a four and eighth inch bore, three, 400 stroke. Um, so a typical uh, inch 090 compression height, one, one, two millimeter ring packs. Had this ordered, uh, the shelf piston is a 16 cc dish. I had these ordered with 22 cc dishes. Uh, considering our cylinder heads that we're gonna use our dark iron eagles measured about 53 cc's. And um, we wanted the compression ratio down a little bit below 10 to one uh, so that there's no issues with pump gas. On, on this engine. So I'm gonna weigh all these, I'm gonna measure all these and make sure that they're all uh, right. And uh, I'll show you um, the wrist pins, we'll measure those and the locks and we'll measure, or I'm sorry, not measure, but weigh those. And uh, we'll take a look at our piston rings. <laughs> this isn't gonna be a very long video, but it's necessary work that I have to do on every single engine. I'll also pour, um, since we got a good sealing edge all the way around the piston, we'll pour this dish, make sure it's 22 cc's. Um, so as an aside there, you could also, so I'm doing that now just in case they messed up on the order so I can get it changed. Generally when the engine's going together and there's a piston and there's a rod in um and rings in the engine i'll pour a cylinder and when you pour a cylinder it takes into account this area or this volume around the top of the piston down to the first ring and um that's called your crevice volume so that little so pistons are not vertically straight um they have a taper to them so they're bigger on the bottom smaller on the top um, so this area above that top ring up to the top of the piston holds volume and that actually factors into your compression ratio. So it's usually about a cc, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. 
uh, you can't really take that for, for granted, so you need to measure. But it does play into your compression ratio. So I'm going to weigh all these. So we'll have a weight for um, our balancer, and then we'll get some good measurements. So first one, need to turn our scale on. We'll see what the difference is between uh, those domed race tech pistons that were a little bit bigger bore uh, yesterday and these. So those were 446 yesterday. These are 373. And um, the, the reason is smaller bore size and a huge volume. So a big dish instead of a dome. So I'm going to go through and weigh all these and uh, I'll get right back with you. All right, so we talked about yesterday how the quality of pistons um, is playing into the role of precision. And uh, let's see, these pistons are all within, um, let's see, four tenths of a gram with each other. So here's the low, here's the high. So very, very close together. And it's hard to get aluminum um, all close together because it's... Uh, the density of aluminum is so much different than steel. So, um, you know, you think when you try to weight balance these guys, a lot of guys try to grind underneath uh, the pin boss or into, you know, this area here or drill it or whatever. It takes a tremendous amount of material removal to, uh, to equal aluminum up. Uh, so next step, uh, I'm going to pour one of these guys and make sure that we got that 22 cc's. So what I've done is I've put just a layer of, uh, of grease on there. We're going to get our plate on and we'll make sure we get a good solid seal all the way around. Okay. And then we'll just fill it up, see what happens. All right. So we measured exactly 22 cc's and Molly was spot on. So we verify that we got what we got. So that's kind of our uh, pre-balance and uh, our checklist that we usually roll through for when the rotating assembly stuff comes in. Measure everything, and by the way, all of these pistons just vary within two ten thousand two ten thousandths of an inch within each other, which is really good considering they're coated. Um, so measured, weighed, verified the dish, weighed the wrist pins, weighed the ring pack, weighed the locks, weighed a pair of bearings. And uh, so we qualify that everything is uh, in good shape thus far and we can continue. Uh, so similar um, steps to yesterday when we were messing with Mr. Mark's uh, small block Ford stuff, the tunnel port stuff. And we just hopped over to uh, Mr. Ron's stuff. So just qualifying the parts as they come in. Uh, short video, I know, but uh, hopefully this helps you when you get your parts in just to, uh, to know what to do to make sure that everything is in line with what you should have. And I can give all these weights to uh, my balancer and he can get the crank balanced and we can continue. All right, guys, hope you're having a good week so far and a good weekend so far, and uh, I hope to see you soon. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out. We've got two 363s coming through. Well, I should say one 363 and one that's just a little bit bigger than that. That's the tunnel port motor. And um, we've got the GT40P heads that have come back from Mr. Joe for our 302. And I've got uh, a big 510 cubic inch FE that's on the stand waiting on an intake manifold and a bunch of other stuff. So you don't want to miss out. Talk to you soon.